Hey, you guys. Welcome back to another segment of Black Male Accountability. So today's segment is going to tie into the isms. You know, we love to talk about them isms half-assedly in our community. So today's ism is going to be texturism. All right. So texturism operates in a similar manner as colorism. It is the acceptance or glorification of an individual straight or loosely coiled hair, natural hair texture over an individual's coarse, kinkier, or tightly coiled natural hair texture. Shameless plug. Go cop that fuego. I'm just saying. You know, healthy hair is good hair. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to the video, though. Texturism is a part of colorism because the notion is that the lighter you are in complexion, the looser textured the hair will be. And we've seen oftentimes that that's not always the case, even with these biracials that we fucking fetishize in this community. Look at Doja Cat. Her hair probably thicker than mine. Shit. I at least have a mixture of 4A, maybe a little type 3C in there. But she got that straight up from Africa. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's straight out of Africa. So um, with that being said, real quick, a point that I do want to note, both men and women go through this. Um, I want to touch on the fact that black men like seem to vehemently want to as associate self-hate exclusively with black women. And I'm sick of that shit. It's annoying. It's disingenuous. It's not true. The same way that you can bring up the fact that, and we're going to get into the weave, black women. I love y'all, but I, I, I got to be real with y'all too. I'm not going to sit here and bash y'all, but I'm going to be honest, just like I'm honest with black men. The same way that they got an obsession, some of black women, not all, but some of them have an obsession with weave, is the same way you have an obsession with your white women. And anything light, bright, and white. So, self-hate manifests different ways in the community, but stop acting like black women are the only self-hating part of this community. Because that's the damn lie. Look at 50 Cent. He obviously don't love himself. And he knows that he wouldn't get these women, these exoticals, without the money he has. Look at 50 Cent. He looks like a fucking thumb. The fuck? Y'all know these bitches wouldn't fuck with you if you didn't have money. <laughs> but at any rate, let me relax. So let me insert this Grapevine clip real quick. And they kind of honed in. I just watched their two-part series on texturism. I really enjoyed it. I like the Grapevine. Um, I'm definitely going to have to watch more of their videos. People have been telling me to tune into it, but um, I finally got down to it to watch the texturism video to see if there was anything I could incorporate into this video. And I found some stuff, a couple clips, actually. So with that being said, um, she, um, these women are going to break down also how black men have benefited from the natural hair community. Even though we tend to turn our eye up anytime our women want to do anything, but we've actually benefited from this. And I'm going to touch on some points that they brought up later. But let me go ahead and insert that now. And then I think this is my biggest problem with men because mm. um, they trivialize it. I can't count how many times I've seen on Facebook, on Twitter, I cannot, where men will say, I cannot wait till this natural hair movement is over. It's oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's just like, but thank, but you know, thank, thank the universe, thank the gods, because the movement that we have gone through, the natural hair movement of women, has actually inspired men. And it has yeah. saved yeah. men, as we all do. We, as, as, black, oh, as, we all, as we all do. As we all do. Yeah. The black woman's yeah, movement like, has like, saved yeah. men because a lot of men have had to deal with the same issues with locks, locks and yeah. with braids yeah. and with like even men now who even have fades. decided the fades now or how to, to cut their hair waves, before to, yeah. to get to get brush waves, yep. you know, but now it's okay. <laughs> but now it's like, but now it's like, yeah, losing your hairline early because you were so because you were so set on getting a particular again a Caesar again a wet fade you know every two weeks. But now you know because of like you know this movement and we're seeing more men with like you know twisted hair and we're seeing more men with grown hair and you know just expressing themselves through their hair like they're supposed to and that's why it just like you know. I, when people talk about it's just hair or it's, it's not just hair because the, because just like it's not just skin it's right. it's not just hair we are we are defending our blackness we are defending our black bodies all right you guys so y'all just watched that video and as she stated black men have also benefited from the natural hair movement um and i mean i see black men talk about this selectively kind of like you know when locks are a situation but i don't see them really have black women's back like that not as a collective and i'd like to see a little more of that especially when we're defending the 4c 
girls, not so much really the three type three mixed biracials or just the light skin or dark skin women with the looser hair texture. Um, because they don't need, they're not really the ones who need the defending. You know what I'm saying? The natural hair movement was not started for them. And we'll go into how I find the natural hair community to be problematic, both on YouTube and off. Um, we'll go into that a little later. But with that being said, um, while we, you know what I'm saying? Um, or no, 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 no. I'm getting ahead of myself. I think we all at one point or another have heard the term good hair or nappy hair slash nappy headed. Now, while the term nappy, just like the term nigga, can be debatable, and if y'all would like to know my take on that, um, let me know down below and I'll do a video on that. Um, I did a video on it like three years ago. I don't know if my views have changed since then. So that's why I said if y'all want me to do one, I'll do one. Um, but there is no room for debating the toxicity of the term, quote unquote, good hair. So with that being said, let's go to another video. And I think actually it might be two. Um, let me give you all these clips real quick. And then we're going to go into some points that this article, um, or I'm going to read some of this article and bounce off the points from that. This is really a problem. And so we police ourselves. But not only that, there are countless stories of young black girls in charter schools mm. who have been sent home, yes. detention, yes. suspension, yeah. banned from prom, mm -hmm. you know, all these Man. things that go on their record, on their record mm -hmm. for braids, for mm -hmm. having a hair that's thicker than two inches, because yeah, that's the root for, you know, for, for their, black. for being black. And that's the issue. Oh we, it's a You're way that we are actually criminalizing blackness yeah. Yeah. through the hair. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a real repercussion. So there are a lot of people yeah. who are trying to escape that right. institutional mm -hmm. racism in their yeah. pursuit of I hair, mean, that's good real. hair. Actual <laughs> curls, let's go. And the other thing too is, yeah. it's about being unattainable, not to bring race into it, but a lot of times when you see the looser curl patterns, it's due to genetics. You can't change your genes. Right. No product right. is gonna yeah. make you yeah. a mixed girl with, like no product is gonna do that to you if that's what they're selling you. Right. So that, and that's why they keep pushing that because they know, we'll tell you this is what you need to look mm -hmm. like. We know you'll never get it. So you'll keep buying it. <laughs> All right, so you guys just felt, <clears throat> just heard those clips. And I like what they were saying. I like the conversation. Well, we're gonna have a few more Grapevine clips and we'll try not to overload. But um, I just like their talking points. I really did. So this article is from anodright.com. And I'm going to take some of the points that I read from it. I will try to remember to leave all the links down below for these articles, though, in the description box. So it reads, like many other things in this country, texturism stems from racism. Black people were not, in parentheses, and still aren't, liked and anything that is exclusive to us such as our skin tone and hair texture is frowned upon from the beginning we have been told that what makes us unique and that oh yeah yeah and that should be a source of pride we should instead try to hide and change to meet white folks standard of beauty hence the popular popularity of perms wigs and weaves now i'm sure some of you reading this are like hold up i wear wigs and weaves and i love my hair but i challenge you to really reflect on why you put them on other than liking to change up your style is there not a small part of you that feels sexier or more confident when you have long hair or the perfect curls do you not feel as though when people see you they will be more accepting to you if not kudos to you but for many folk we front like it's a preference y'all know we love that word preference in the black community when in reality there is something else a little bit more insidious living beneath the surface okay to tie in with wigs and weaves like i said we can also equate the fact that you niggas sit there watching netflix with a wave curl brush or whatever the wave brush i don't know i've, de I've never had an obsession with having the flyest waves but y'all sit there and brush that wave brush on your head throughout your damn show on netflix you know what i'm saying or the obsession to have your tape line on fleek every damn two weeks fleek or lit whatever the word is now I look, i'm getting older i don't care for all the damn trendy words <laughs> but um the obsession of getting your fade taped up every damn two weeks all right so you can equate that to wigs and weaves for people who feel like this is more of an uh critique on black women no it's it's, it's a problem with both within both genders of the community it just manifests in different ways as i said earlier now moving on to the next part portion of the article on the other end there are a lot of folks who are natural out here in the streets these streets wondering if women only wear their hair straight um their hair straight truly love themselves however just because you are natural that doesn't mean you are off the hook 
the natural hair immunity is still subscribing to the Eurocentric standard, which is why kinky hair is only praised when it's long and why laying edges is a must. We will see ambiguous blacks as the focus because kinky hair on light skin works better for folks. Meanwhile, dark skin and super kinky hair isn't seen as beautiful unless the hair is super long. I can attest to this. I've had to unfollow a lot of natural hair pages because they only post a certain length if it's 4C hair. I mean, think about it. When you see everyone on Instagram commenting hair goals, they're not looking at women whose hair is ear length and super kinky. They're looking at the woman whose afro is so big it takes up the entire picture. Or they're looking at the woman who was four years into her hair journey and now has the perfect coils and curls. All right. And this is another part that I want to highlight where black men are included in this. Black women and black men. I added the and black men because there are S curls. This is a thing, people. (laughs) But... Are still um, black women and black men are still using texturizers and even using twist outs and stretching methods and calling it a way of making their hair more manageable when in reality they are trying to manipulate their hair texture because the original doesn't feel as cute. The natural hair movement should be about black women and black men. I'm going to add that part in there. Being proud of their hair without any manipulation. Your hair should be seen as beautiful without laying your edges, spending three hours on a twist out or having it be down your back. And right now it's not. While white folks think we're saying that we give zero fucks about what they think about our hair we ultimately do we are still trying to make sure we're seen at the very least as acceptable by both black people and white people but on that eurocentric scale the natural hair community is supposed to be a space where we embrace and support our natural hair texture and yet we find ourselves still striving to meet specific standards for our own sisters and brothers to celebrate our hair Point being, this needs to change because it's impacting, it's impacting our mental health. And I also want to, I'm adding brothers and men in there as well, because this is black male accountability. And although I would say women deal with this issue probably more than men do, you know what I'm saying? We still deal with it. Um, I don't feel like when you're dealing with marginalized groups, you shouldn't ostracize the person who gets the brunt of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like with colorism, light skinned people experience colorism too. You know what I'm saying? It's not on the same scale as dark skinned people. And no, I'm not talking about the fact that, you know, people called you, you know, you had to fight for your blood. I'm not talking about really that. It's a lot deeper than that. And I hate when people trivialize it down to dating preferences or the fact that, you know, we have to prove that we're black. You know what I'm saying? But that's a whole nother. Go, go refer to my colors and video. <laughs> um, and then um, also refer Well I don't know if I'll have it out by this time But I know I'm going to do a video on the Strained relationship between light skinned men and dark skinned men And some of y'all ain't going to like what I have to say there But it's the truth um, So with that being said Back to the article though When we talk about color, uh, texturism We are ultimately talking about self-worth and value. As I said before, this country's evaluation system is founded on one's proximity to whiteness. Really, this world, because they colonized the world, but let's keep it real. Um, But back to the article, even with regards to our hair texture, to hair texture, the closer you are to Eurocentric standards is the beauty of uh, standards of beauty. Sorry, the better off you are. Those who do not meet and or cannot conform to these to meet these standards are left at the bottom of society's totem pole. They are the ones who are left to constantly consider how they are being perceived by others in ways that some of our brothers and sisters don't have to because their hair texture is working in their favor. Their const- this constant perception, worry of perception, can breed anxiety, self-doubt, and low esteem. Black girls as young as six understand the social capital of good hair and the right skin tone. Regardless of how many times, and that's quote unquote good hair, quote unquote the right skin tone. Regardless of how many times mommy and daddy tell them that their kinky hair is, kinky beautiful hair is as perfect as it is, they still feel as though they have less value than other girls. This negative perception can often lead them to feeling as if they must be willing to do more things for other people, more sorry more thing yeah more things for other people or overcompensate and ask other aspects of their life so they can be seen as worthwhile including having fewer boundaries or doing things that make them feel uncomfortable to fit in all right Oof. let me catch my breath real quick all right i'm back now I had to go give me some water for all that <laughs> all right so um now i want to go through some points and examples that further bounce off of that article. First, I want to touch on the bias of the quote-unquote natural hair community and movement. 
Um, and that's on YouTube and off YouTube as well. <clears throat> and they kind of, you know, pretty much, you know, have summed it up. You know, the looser hair texture, looser curls. That's what is elevated, promoted, preferred. On If you're talking about natural women, that is what the preferred look is. You know what I'm saying? That's considered kempt. Um, and we're not going to use special snowflakes to make the rule not like the, the standard still applies. It doesn't matter. It's just like colorism. It doesn't matter that we have Issa Rae now and Tiffany Haddish, which Tiffany Haddish is brown skin. But nonetheless, I see people try to bring that up just like Charlemagne did on The Breakfast Club with Amara La Negra. That doesn't erase what society's done just because you have one or two people who defy the, the standard. Like, come on now. Let's be ingen let's not be disingenuous. But at any rate, back to the topic of the natural hair community. Um, like they said, you know, you have these women, and if you watch their full clips, I'll try to remember to link the grapevine discussion down below. Um, but if you watch their clips, you know, they really broke it down. How like the looser some of those are some of those women are YouTube bloggers, vloggers. So they broke down, you know, the women with the looser hair texture, they they have a privilege there. You know what I'm saying? And I hate when we talk about privilege and like black people, they think so binary. Just because we're saying you have light skin privilege or black male privilege, straight black male privilege, whatever the situation is, that's not equating it to white privilege. That doesn't have to mean that it's automatically the same as white privilege. White privilege is not the only privilege that exists. Rich privilege is also a thing. I'm willing to bet you that Trump cares more if you're rich than if you're white, which is why I look at all these white lower class people in awe when they try to support him because his policies don't really, they, he don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know what I'm saying? Privilege is like, it works and manifests in different ways. And just because you're marginalized, that does not mean you cannot be privileged. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, there's some skinny broke niggas right now, but guess what? They got a better chance at the dating pool than a fat broke nigga. You know, like, I don't understand why people try to trivialize shit. It's not that hard to understand. <laughs> and just because I don't think when people point out privilege, we're not demonizing people. It's just, hey, you benefit from this. And it would behoove you to speak out against it you know what i'm saying since you're gonna get the you know what i'm saying airtime anyways and later on i will insert a clip of um this light-skinned woman who had brought up the fact that she's the safe black now i usually refer to safe blacks as brown skinned people but she you know that can be used interchangeably with light-skinned women as well but we'll get back to her a little later in the video i admire her honesty as a light-skinned woman we will get back to her though but at any rate, um, moving on to some examples. First off, H&M. We all remember when the news broke and the ad came out for the children with the messy hair. And um, while I see what they were going for, I can kind of see where people are upset. But I also see um, some hypocrisy here. And people may not like my take on it, but it is, I'm not here to be like. I'm here to tell the truth as I see it, as I always say. So with that being said, I see this kind of from two viewpoints. On one end, I can see where black people are upset because H&M historically doesn't give a fuck about the image of black people. What you need to do is, and what, what I need us to do in these instances is to stop being so damn loud with your backlash. Just quietly remove your dollars. If you're, if you're still supporting H&M at this point, you know, y'all shouldn't have been doing it after the coolest monkey in the jungle. So if, here's the thing. Here's how in, being invested works. When you divest from a company, whether it's a company disrespecting you, whether, you know, a lot of black women feel like black men, they just have lost hope in black men, so they're moving on to other men. Whatever the situation is, if somebody is disrespecting you, just like how you would cut off a bad friendship, um, you cut that person off. You no longer spend your money with them. And I'm sure black people went back to H&M afterwards. I'm sure, just like y'all went back to Gucci after y'all protested for three months. Hey, T.I., kind of bullshit. At any rate, that's what I was saying. So, like, for me, I wasn't hurt when the whole, you know, well, I was hurt for a different reason when the um, situation happened with this dark-skinned little girl because it highlights the fact that we hate 4C hair. And I will get into that on my other viewpoint the other side that I see on this, but we'll, we'll, let me take my time on this. Sorry. This might take a little long of a breakdown, but, um, yeah, with that being said, um, so when you're divested, you don't have these strong feelings. Like it's like, Oh, okay. 
another racist ad. It is what it is. Just like Dove. I, 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 if you're still black and buying Dove, they already showed you twice. They don't give a fuck about black women. That's on you at this point. If they decide to pop out another racist ad, I will not do a video on it. I'm no. Like we already know. You've been told twice. This is not baseball. We don't need three strikes or out. Depending on how you fuck up the first time, you might be able to redeem yourself. But after the coolest monkey in the jungle being put on a black boy sweat uh, or be a sweatshirt being put on a black boy, fuck no. No. There's no excuse. They know. These people put billions and millions into these ads, these commercials, all this shit. They know that racial tensions that are going on. They may not be the wokest people, but everybody knows that you don't call black people monkeys. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt so damn much. Black people kill me with that shit. But we hold our own to the fe uh, to the fire if they fuck up. It's fucking ridiculous. But at any rate, let me relax. So um, I don't really care that his parents didn't care. And I know a lot of y'all are trying to, y'all tried to use the mom as a scapegoat. His dad was sitting right there beside her. He might have been quiet as a church mouse, but he was there. Um... So his parents, I don't care if they're, I think they were African. I don't care if they don't find monkey in the jungle offensive. We know what it is. Um, but I see where people's issues because of that situation, how they reacted to this situation with this little girl. However, on the flip side of that, um, and I will say real quick before I go to the flip side, I can note that it doesn't look like they did anything to her hair. Like it looked like she came home from school or came home from school or not came home from school, but went to the place straight from school. You know what I'm saying? All the other girls, like even let's keep it real. When these light skinned girls are biracial girls, like when Zaya hops, when Zendaya hops out of bed, even if she wears a messy bun, I'm sure she still moisturizes her hair or does something. like there's still something that's going to be done there. You know what I'm saying? It's not just going to be straight up, oh, pop it in a bun and go. No, no. I don't think anybody does that. You know, if you're white, maybe. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 you know, they may not. I don't know how white people have to, how often they have to moisturize their hair. I don't know what products they use. That's, that's not an area that I'm well versed in. But I don't think anybody, even if you're wearing a messy bun, just wakes up and walks out the house. No. So that's not realistic. However, I'm going to be honest. As a black Light-skinned man who has been through a lot of texturism in my life, quite a bit of texturism. I can say honestly that even if they had moisturized the girl's hair, that y'all would not be pleased. You wouldn't care. You wouldn't be pleased. <laughs> you would not. You would not care. Hence why Doja Cat said, yeah, her hair nappy, but she thick or she light-skinned or whatever the hell she said. Like, you wouldn't care. <laughs> so there's so many nuances and so many levels to this shit. And also on the flip side... I think that we can say, okay, they should have done something to her hair. That's cool. A lot of black people feel like if it's not sleek, slick back, and laid to the gods, as y'all like to say, then it's, it's unkempt. It's nappy. It's, it's not uniform. You know what I'm saying? And there is, there is a situation that we need to address there. You know what I'm saying? As far as this whole monster of isms, no, we didn't create it. But we're still perpetuating it. The whole Gabby Douglas situation. And then y'all are shocked when Simone Biles, after that situation, I, I, I want to say that happened first. You're shocked when Simone Biles says that her brown skin ass, she wants somebody, if she wanted somebody to play her in a biopic, it would be Zendaya. But y'all was just roasting Gabby Douglas, Douglas's kinky edges. So for sweating after she just broke a record during sports, like make it make sense. We are continuing this shit. We play a part in this. So yes, when we fuck up, I'ma call the shit out. And a lot of y'all, y'all don't like 4C hair. You don't like type 4 hair. You like natural when it looks a certain way. You're good with type 4 hair if it's in a twist out or anything like that. But if I just moisturize this fro and walked out, you know what I'm saying? Or if a black woman, let me say that. Because black men, although we, we face texturism, it's not as extreme. Because, you know, people are looking at women as a symbol of beauty. And if, um, logically speaking... The standard of beauty is white. So, of course, women are going to catch more flack for certain things like this aspects. But, you know what I'm saying? You'll get different looks. I know it. I did a twist out like a couple weeks back and everybody was complimenting me at work. So, I know this shit. <laughs> um, but with that being said, like nobody's, nobody's making this up. It happens. So, with that being said, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to keep <laughs> these videos shorter 
because I see the engagements going up and I don't want to start doing no 40, 30 minute videos. I could really talk about this all day long, but I'm trying to keep this shorter. So let me go ahead and next up, Blue Ivy. We already know how y'all been walking Blue Ivy like a dog. Like, literally, the whole time since that girl has been born, it's been her hair, her hair, her hair. But, as soon as she popped up with Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce with that straight hair, from all those protective styles that her mama had her doing, and notice, she didn't have her hair hidden away for 11 months out of the year. I just gotta be honest, black women. Now, if you don't want to wear it out in your Afro state, that's one thing, but twist outs, braid outs, those are a thing. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're getting, you know what I'm saying, the more natural styles. I'll give women who wear weave that, black women. If you get the braids or the cornrows, but if you're wearing 34 inches down your ass 11 months out of the year, that's not assimilation anymore, baby. I'm sorry, it's not. Same with you niggas on the couch watching Netflix with your wave brush in your hand 24-7. That's not, no, no, no. There's some problems there that you need to unpack. But nonetheless, um, soon as she popped up with that straight hair, you know what I'm saying? Y'all was it ooing and on, ah gushing and all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with cause that's what your straight that's what your hair when you do link checks, that's what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do, you straighten hair, do a link check. I understand, you know, the the happiness of having long hair. And although that may be a Eurocentric thing, because I said in another video and somebody had laughed at it, but um I understand all that stuff. And I understand I Eurocentric standards aside, I understand being glad that your hair is grown or that somebody that you like's hair is grown, but we we just need to unpack this stuff a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? And, and that one right there doesn't even need to be unpacked. Anytime her hair was out and kinky, like y'all literally started a, what is it, change.org petition for Beyonce to comb her child's hair? Really? I would have told y'all bitches to bow down too, the fuck? <coughs> The fuck? Like, does that not sound crazy? But with that being said, um, next up, Doja Cat. That's really simple. You know what I'm saying? She um, is a biracial woman who, um, you know what I'm saying? She has the light skin. She's thick and all that. But as she said, she still got the kinky hair. And she was talking about it on live. And um, you know what I'm saying? You know, she says she loves her hair. I don't, I don't. I, I see that she definitely has some self-hate from her black father not being in her life. Um, and when you, I mean, what do you expect? You left a Jewish white woman to raise this half black girl to love herself. Like what is going to happen here? But apparently now he's trying to get back in her life and all that stuff. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. But um, here you see right here, you know, the light skinned girl, but she has the 4 hair and it can kind of go in different directions at that point. You know what I'm saying? As far as featureism and texturism is concerned and colorism, like the light skinned woman in the video, she acknowledges that she has a high, uh, she is um, higher up on the hierarchy than kinky haired black women, excuse me, even though her hair is coarse. Whereas Amala, she sees herself as um, less than because of her hair and she doesn't like her hair. And, it, I mean, it's sad, you know, all things aside with everything that went on her. It, it, I think any black person or partially black person who doesn't like their black features, it, it is, is a sad thing, regardless of whatever they did and all that other stuff. That's sad. Um, I'm not here to cape for her, you know what I'm saying? But I will say that's sad in and of itself. But um, next, I kind of want to go into a little bit more personal of example, two personal examples, actually. All right, so my natural hair journey has been going on since 2017. Um, I kind of went dye crazy, like in high school with hair dye. And then it was worse because I wasn't really using like dark and lovely, even though that's not necessarily, even though that's not black owned. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's at least more catered to us than fruit teas and all that shit. So I, I fucked my hair up pretty much. And um, then what did it was 2017, I got a bleach. And if I'm if I want, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I was going for Beyonce bleach blonde. I was going for that Beyonce blonde type of blonde. I don't feel like black people, all of us can rock just any blonde. But I wanted that blonde. I thought it was gonna look good on me. I was going for that. I'll be very honest with y'all. And that bleach, my cousin had did it. And what happened was, y'all know when bleach hits your hair, it starts instantly working. Like with hair dye, you can take your time and kind of make sure you get every strand. But with bleach, no, you need to have that bitch detangled and ready to go. <laughs> and I found out because my hair turned red. Um, and then instead of dyeing it black, 
the next week or the next two weeks. In fact, instead, well, I couldn't wait because I had work and shit. No, I was not walking around with a red, with no, I wasn't. And then because she started at the back, some of it was yellow and it just was terrible. And instead of dyeing it black, my ass goes to get a red hair dye and dyes it again. So it was pretty red, you know, think K. Michelle's red wig. It was kind of pretty, but it was, <laughs> it was definitely uh, damaging, damaged at that point. It was fried. And after that, I had tried to S curl just for the fuck of it. Now, I'm not going to lie. I did used to want, like, you know, I used to look at white boys and be like, um, why doesn't my hair do that? You know what I'm saying? I never really had such a, like, I promise you, when I did the S curl, it was like, well, I'm about to cut it off anyways. Let me see what this does. That's what it was. It wasn't no self-hate at that point. But when I was younger, I did used to want to, you know, like the white boys, jerk your hair and flip your little hair, flip your hair bangs. I was like, why doesn't my hair do that? It never really turned into something so deep that I just, you know, relied on S curls and shit. Um, thank God. But um, I, I kind of just naturally grew into loving my hair, which is sad because my mom, she's been on her natural hair journey since 2009. Um, but there's some reasons why I don't think she included me on in on that. That's for another video. <laughs> but at any rate, that's my hair journey. Now, I do want to speak on a family member of mine who um, her hair texture, I will say, is looser than mine. Probably she's probably like maybe 3C, 4A type hair. And I mean, we like compliment her hair so much. And it just like, this is why it goes to show you um, this, this particular lady, she's brown skin. And um, like mommy and daddy really can't be the only ones enforcing this shit. Like this is why black people, if you're going to be, this is my thing. If you're pro-black, then you need to be willing to put in the work. And that includes uplifting all of the community. It includes uplifting all of us and assuring all of us that, hey, we may not be the standard of whiteness, but we got it. You know, you look good. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be pro-black and not do that. You know what I'm saying? I have an issue with the people who claim they're pro-black and, you know, are pro-black in certain areas only. They're not open to hearing other perspectives. They're closed-minded. That's an issue. That's problematic. But mommy and daddy cannot be the only ones to give self-validation. That's not how that works. There's a reason why you have white women literally becoming bulimic, trying to chase the standard of white beauty. It doesn't just affect us, you know what I'm saying? It definitely did a number on us more than white girls. But think about how many white women you see. A lot of them hoes fat. A lot of them hoes fat. I'm just going to say it. A lot of them are big. They're chubby. They're fat. But the media will have you thinking all of them are size two. And eat one cheese, not even a cheeseburger, I tried it. Eat um, one salad every two days. And they're all model-esque. It'll have you thinking that. But that's not true, especially where I live. Oh my God, these white women, ugh. And I work in food, and the salads they be ordering. Let me relax, let me relax. But at any rate, <laughs> um, as I said, mommy and daddy's self-validation, It doesn't. that's not all that you know contributes to a child's self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? Them seeing themselves in magazines, seeing themselves represented in a positive light, that helps. That helps, and it's a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? Mommy and daddy can say what they want at the end of the day, but most kids, they have to go out and figure it out for themselves. So let's not try to change how societal pressure and how self-esteem works just to fit a narrative. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't work. But with that being said, going back to what I was saying, we told her she was pretty all day long. And this particular family member of mine, she has an affinity for whiteness that I, I feel is too far gone. You know what I'm saying? This person really showed me that you can't save everybody. And it's sad because I was really close to this person. But you cannot save everybody. Her affinity to whiteness. And, and then on top of that, like, she only dates white boys for the most part. The one time a mixed boy fucked up on her, she said, this is why I don't bla date black boys. And I didn't like that. Because for one, he's mixed. And for two, it took one mess up for her to say that. Meanwhile, the last white boy she had dated prior to that mixed boy went and called her a monkey on Facebook and a nigger and all this other shit. But you see how she didn't hold him accountable, right? So um, for all white men. So there's definitely a complex that's there. Um, it's really sad. It's really sad. But she um, went through her hair journey, you know, straightening her hair all the time, hair breaking off, having to start over. She literally would cry. You know what I'm saying? Because she had to cut off all her damn hair. And she got the looser strands. I got the, um, the nigga naps, the straight out of Africa. She got the looser strands. But um, 
with that being said, I just wanted to include those two personal stories. Uh, so I've seen texturism and how it can affect kids firsthand and, you know, kids growing to adults and a lot of stuff that, you know, we are facing as adults is stuff that we've locked away as children. So that's all important to know. And I feel like having these conversations will start the healing process. Um, as far as solutions, um, like racism and colorism, this isn't something that can be solved overnight. And it's going to continue to take a lot of effort. And at this point, I want to include the light-skinned woman who, you know what I'm saying, was talking about colorism and how she uplifts dark-skinned women because she understands there's a imbalance there. And this is the type of mindset that black men need to be having. But let's go ahead and insert this clip. Like, my hair is mainly 4B, but I know I'm still a safe black because I'm so light-skinned. Yeah. Um, wow. So I make sure I use my platform to elevate darker-skinned women, make sure I'm always, you That's know, when I can, I yeah. show my 4B hair, just That's letting amazing. people know, like, yeah, I have 4B, yeah, it gets difficult sometimes, but <laughs> yeah, I'm embracing true. it. You know, we all have a social responsibility to make sure we're putting out the correct information for yeah. our viewers, mm -hmm. our subscribers, our followers. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to really dismantle that system because just like our white allies when it comes to racism, that's they have they have a role to play. Mm -hmm. We have a role to play, especially if you have a looser texture to make sure you're elevating darker skin, make sure you're elevating mm -hmm. 4C hair. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so y'all just saw that clip and I found that with the light-skinned people who are a little less ambiguous, it's a little more prevalent. They kind of get it. Because you know what I'm saying? They're, yeah, they're put on a, on top of other black people, but they still, like, phenotypically look black. So, I don't know. Like, usually the ones with the Negro nose, the Jackson 5 nostrils, or the baby hair and afros, the, the real afros, you know, like her, they seem to get it a little bit more. But, you know. Nonetheless, from there, um... As another solution is as we celebrate our natural sisters and brothers, let's make sure we're celebrating everyone. Continue to show love to our sisters with huge afros and locks down her back, but also include our sisters with the extra kinky short 4C hair. Just because she may not be your hair girl, your hashtag hair goal, doesn't mean she shouldn't be praised for embracing her natural hair. Support those who don't want to lay their edges and don't want to walk around oh and don't walk around looking down on them because they don't by not celebrating these women we only do ourselves as a community a disservice more harm and continue to cause those who don't meet the white standards to feel as if they must try harder or do more rather than be proud of what they are and what they have and from there, I want to leave off with this grapevine clip. I think this kind of encapsulates everything that we've talked about and um, holds a mirror up to some of us in this community. So with that being said, y'all listen to these sister preach and I will catch y'all on the next video. Or C, mm -hmm. for B hair. And it's certainly one of the things is to satisfy the male gaze and the media also plays a role. But there are also like very, we're all human and we're all trying mm -hmm. to survive. And there are very real repercussions that black women face. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. I can remember, number one, we police ourselves. I remember Gab, mm -hmm. uh, Gabby Douglas, her mm. first Olympics. Oh my God. When she had that, I this so woman made, hit, like, made she history. Young girl, yeah. She's a young girl. Yes. 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 And, and people oh were God. obsessed with her edges. Yes. And it was at yes. that point that I realized, yes. I realized yes. that to many black people, black mm -hmm. edges matter more than black excellence. And oh. I was like, oh. this is really, this is really for some black people, <laughs> black edges matter more than black excellence, mm. and this is really mm. a problem.